experimenters. I'm Seth Galois. The cameraman is Yassine Eitlout. And today, we're going to be demonstrating part one of two experiments that involves Hooke's Law. We're going to find the spring constant K of a spring that looks just like this along with its equilibrium position that we'll call R1. So, the spring is conveniently contained in a lucite tube right here, right here. And on the spring, there's a brass cylinder right attached to it at the end. So what we need, our first order of business, is one of three masses and that is the mass of the brass cylinder. Let's see. 81.45 is the mass of the brass cylinder, written right on the end of the tube. And while we're here, write down the number of your tube. In this case, it's three. Your tube will have a different number. That's the first of our three masses. So, the second mass that we're going to need, the mass of the hook. We'll see what this does later triple beam balance, find that mass. Then, the mass of the rod that you'll thread into the cylinder and the tube. Find the mass of that. There are your three masses. All right. We'll deal with what to do with those masses in a second. But we're ready for our first elongation measurement. The goal is, is to put on a series of different weights that will give us a series of different elongations. And then we'll plot the weight versus elongation, find the K and R1 from the slope and the intercepts. Okay, so first we put this device on here. And then we screw it in, but not too tightly. Not too tightly. We screw it in because if it's too tight, it will be at an angle. And then if we start putting masses, not all of its weight will be downward. So we want it loose enough, so when we put the masses on, they'll go straight down. So, come down here. Come down here. We're ready to take our first measurement. Now, this is rare, but the cylinder might be sticking to the side. If that rare event happens, you can just take your pen and tap it for each measurement, and it'll it should go down to where it belongs. So, you see this, this line right there? You see that line right in the center of the cylinder? We want to measure by, on, on that line all the time. So, we'll take our first measurement by matching that line up to with the convenient ruler that is taped on. We measure the two decimal places. So, let's see here. I get 891. That's our first elongation versus our first weight, which is the brass cylinder. All right. Our second measurement is going to involve attaching these things. And we want 200 grams. So we have to do a little math. Take those three masses that we found, those three masses that we found, and we want to add enough mass to make it all 200 grams. So, say that the three masses equal this, 143.60 grams. So, 200, subtract, and what do we have here? We have 56.40 grams. Now, we don't have fractional grams. The best we're going to be able to do is to get 56 grams. So, over here is our little individual masses. Now, I understand, I understand you're worried about that point four that we won't have. Don't worry. We're going to be dealing with much larger masses on the order of kilograms. So that's negligible for us. So I need 56. Uh, I have uh, the 50. I have five, and I got a little baby mass, which is one. 
these masses go on the hanger. All right. Then the rod we thread into the cylinder and screw it in to the bottom here and don't screw it in too tightly. That's good. And then this goes on here. And there we have it. This is now 200 grams, 0.2 kilograms. And I read the elongation for that point. All right, then, now we just go through the process of adding more masses and more masses until we get to around, or until we get to uh, under 16. And we don't want to go over 16 centimeters, because we go over 16 centimeters, we're starting to reach the limit of the spring where the spring starts to become a wire, and we can damage the spring. So we want to go up to 16, but don't go over 16. So maybe stop at 15.4 or 5, you know, something like that. So, 200 grams, ready to take a third point. Read that elongation with your 200 grams. Another 200 grams. There we go, read the elongation. Another 200 grams, there we go, read the elongation. And we keep going, we keep going, another 200 grams, read the elongation. So right now, uh, we're not even close to the 16. We're around 11, uh, a little bit more than 11. So, and we're running out of room and we're running out of masses. So, to get 1.2 kilograms, and then to go on from there, we need to change our setup. Take out these masses, the 200 gram ones, leave, the other individual masses on that we dealt with before, the 56 grams, and then now we have the monster mass. <laughs> A one kilogram monster mass, yeah! All right, so this we put on the end of the rod, then we put this back on, this was one kilogram, so now we have 1.2 kilograms. Reading really elongation. And then 1.4 kilograms. Reading really elongation. 1.6 kilograms. Reading really elongation, and so on. Uh, until you just reach, but not go over the 16. Now I know what you're saying. You have your data. You're ready to plot your points and do your linear regression, but before you stampede to Excel, don't leave this hanging. Part of the bad joke. Don't leave this hanging, put everything back, because if you leave this hanging while you do your Excel, you can damage your spring. So put everything back, put everything, take everything apart, put everything back. And now, you're ready to go to Excel. Find your line. Find K. Find R1. Save those two values for next week. Good luck. That's Hook's Law Part 1. Thank you.